On the phone line right now, she's a senior policy advisor for nursing practice and work environment with American Nurses Association. And of course, Kendra is also a registered nurse with a master's degree in public health. Good morning, Kendra. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine. So let's get right to it. We're opening up the country. Um, the whole country is open with you know limited restrictions right now. What is the position of most of the nurses that you talk to? Yes. So we are still encouraging individuals to stay home. I mean, we are, you know, seeing the tip of the iceberg um, with this in terms of cases. I know that, you know, locally we have seen some decline. However, you know, this is just the start and, you know, it's still it's too soon. Um, the fear is that, you know, particularly with Memorial Day weekend coming up this weekend, and if the, if the weather's nice, people are going to be out and about. But it's still safer, safer to just stay home. Let me ask you, Kendra, uh, a lot of nurses have been silenced. They're scared to speak out. Now, you're part of the, uh, the American Nurses Association. I'm not asking you to take a position. But don't you think it's important for your voices to be heard? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, there's a fear of retaliation. And, you know, because of that, you know, nurses have experienced being silenced. And, you know, this isn't something that, you know, is new during the times of COVID. This is something that's been a longstanding issue within the profession, the fear of retaliation if you speak out. You know, but, you know, nurses, we do have an ethical obligation to stand up and to speak out if, you know, we feel as though something is wrong. And I know that nurses now more than ever have really stepped up and, you know, they've said, hey, the way we're being treated is not right. We're not safe and we need the appropriate safeguards to do our job. And it's also also been a cry to the general public to follow guidelines and to stay home. And not to be disrespectful to some doctors, but I got to tell you, I remember when I had surgery, I found nurses to know more than a lot of the doctors that come in to visit you. And you don't have to comment on that, but that's another way to suppress you. I, you know, I, I heard a, a, a nurse out in the hallway instructing the doctor, this is what you need to do. And, but that's, you guys are just incredible people. You come in with the jokes and you try to make that stay uh, more comfortable for people. And, Hats off to all the nurses and and the nurses that we have lost during this pandemic. Uh, You you guys are heroes, and and I can't say that enough. But one of the things I wanted to bring up to you is that we are now learning more about COVID-19 and the treatment. And I watched a doctor testify up on the hill, and I thought what he said was just so profound that when people first get to the hospital— They're putting them on steroids. They're putting them on blood thinners. And the worst thing he said, the biggest mistake we made was putting people on ventilators. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So, you know, we're starting to hear so much right now about how treatment and the course of treatment is changing. And, you know, patients were presenting and coming in, you know, with, you know, in a severe what we call hypoxic state meaning that there is the lack of oxygen. Patients just couldn't breathe. And so what was happening was patients were being put um, on, on ventilators for the respiratory support. But, you know, during the course of this time, over the past eight weeks, and then what we're also learning about, um, you know, other patients and studies that have been done in other countries, that there's other ways to manage the disease. There's other ways to, you know, to to provide uh, the course of treatment. But I think it also depends, too, on what symptoms one is presenting with. Um, You know, as you know, there's been a multitude of symptoms and a multitude of reactions that we've seen. And it's just so different depending upon, you know, one's clinical presentation, what the course of care should be. Absolutely. Well, listen, I, you know, next time we probably need to get into the various vaccines. But right now, I think to me, more important is treatment. 
we need to do treatment because people are not social distancing. You can see what, what's happening out on those beaches and all those people are, are just gathering shoulder to shoulder. And it is really sad. Hey, a $1.5 million commitment from Johnson & Johnson and Tylenol uh, kicked off a national fund, which will deploy critical resources and support to our nurses on the front lines of this pandemic. You guys can help out with the Coronavirus Response Fund for nurses. Uh, text THANKS to 202 202- Two, two, and make a $10 donation. We appreciate it. Kendra, thank you so much for the vital information that you share with us and our listeners because people want answers. And at the end of the day, I want to implore, especially all of our folks of color, do not wait. When you start getting symptoms, go to the hospital. Don't ride it out. Now's the time to go get treated because that is becoming the big issue that we're going too late. And yes. listen, and, and there's a lot of fear involved. I get that. But we'll get into that next time. Okay, Kendra? Sounds great. All right. You take care. Okay. Thank you. You too.